from the vault, high atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talking Catholic. This is the co-host, Mary McCusker, and I'm joined by Mike Walsh, who's sitting at a social distance across from me, which is a good thing on one hand because he can't look at my notes, but on the other, (laughs) I... Well, if I need a nudge under the table, if I'm talking too much, I don't know if I'll get that. So, Well, fortunately, we're sitting directly across from each other, six feet. I'm hoping you'll notice me. And it's me. kind of more stressful that way. <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, we're, we're not in the vault. We're, we're actually, not in the vault, so that's a good thing. We're vault adjacent today because we're in a much, much larger conference room where we can be a little further apart. And uh, and yeah, so this is nice. Although we're also in uh, where people walk into my main office area. So we could have some guests pop in from time to time and that I will shoo I'll out. Sh- Shoot them a, a look the second they peer in the window. Don't Sounds worry. Good. And uh, and this is also, uh, I think this is the latest we've ever recorded a podcast before it goes up. So you're going to be hearing this within a few hours of uh, the time we've actually recorded it oh, for the, yeah, for the right. listener. Because, uh, well, it was just a scheduling thing. It's a summertime, things time. The summertime hey, things. I didn't schedule this one, Mike. No, no, I no. I think that you did. No, so. I'm not lamenting that. I'm just, I've, I find that scheduling things in the summertime seems a bit more last minute than, uh, it does. than we, yeah. when it's during the year. But anyway, so how are you holding up in your summer? Well, I remember going into 2020 thinking, this is going to be my year. I'm going to go on a vacation and I'm going to do all these things. And, um, you know, new year, new me. And, uh, <laughs> We all know that, as is the case for so many people, that it didn't exactly come true. You but know, that's okay. I'm lucky. I have a job. I'm healthy. Yep. Right now, knock on wood. But <laughs> also, yeah. <laughs> By the grace of God, we're all. We're fortunately, every in this room right right now is healthy. But um, yeah. we, uh, you know, it's funny that you should say that. I actually use that as a learning uh, opportunity with my son this week, because my son was going. Dad, I cannot wait until next year rolls around. And I said, I said, Jack, do you Be know careful. how many people said that in 2019? Right. Like that was a thing last year where I people know. were really like, oh man, 2020 is going to be so much better than 2019. Right. 2019. And I'm look, I'm thinking back to 2019, going, man, the glory days of 2019. I know the all the struggles and stress yeah. of 2019. I kind of miss it. It's a it's a good reminder to you know, you know, live in the moment and don't expect that things necessarily get better that you know life is just what life is and and there are things that are out of our if if there's one thing that that these times have shown us is that there's a lot that's out of our control right Right. as human beings that that we can't you know we like to think ourselves as master of the world master of our domains and masters of everything and what we've come to realize this year is that oh we are very much subjects of things yes um and it's a good reminder you know for those of us who are spiritually inclined we we often try to remind ourselves that uh you know we are less than um and i think sometimes our humanity kicks in and we we get to that point like oh you know we're we're the best ever this has been a wonderful you know humbling opportunity we've all received to to say that so uh optimistic for you mike well you know what (laughs) rare optimism shining through but i do agree sincerely you know i tell you it's it's not so much optimism as a reminder if if there's one thing that has been a constant in my life and i think i mentioned this once on a long time ago was that I've had an issue with um, not so much vanity, but, you know, reading one's own headlines a little too much. And, you know, anytime I've had a catastrophic failure, it's when I f- forgot my humility. So I, now I keep on my wall the, the litany of mil- humility uh, just because I, I, um, I was at a priest conference last summer, I guess. And the moderator of the of the presentation for a certain part of the conference was talking about the the litany of humility. I was like, that is something I need constantly. Oh. <laughs> just and just, next to that, is there a mirror for you to, to stare in? <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a very I'm sorry. Whenever you do get sincere, and it, it really it, it, I know it's very uncomfortable, isn't it? Yeah. Like, so yeah, I, I just have to fire back with something. Well, but don't worry. You're absolutely right. I mean, we struggle with unpredictability, and we like to believe that you know we have control over things but we're really this not. year is a good reminder that we are not <laughs> and and that that's okay and it's that's okay, okay. you exactly. know that you it, it shrink we are, our lives have been shrunk down mm-hmm. to a much smaller area and what i think i hope what people have realized is that's that's really okay it's okay to live in your world it's okay mm-hmm. 
I mean, it's difficult and it's a struggle, but, you know, the fact that we've sort of been reduced is a good thing. Right. You know, physically that we've been reduced is a good thing. Our, our area of movement's been reduced. Our ability to interact has been reduced. Right. And, you know, I think having to go without is a really good reminder. And I think if we if we kind of embrace that as a, as a positive opportunity, not, this, not that I think we have to live this way for our, the rest of our entire lives. Right. But as a reminder that we can exist without all of our little comforts and all of our little opportunities. Yeah. and Allows I, more time for introspection and, yeah. you know, realizing what's really important. That's really what it is. So it's it's been uh, – you're right. I am being a little, perhaps a little overly positive about this. but I, I No, I re- I'm kidding. That I, was – I needed to hear that optimism. <laughs> but I think I think if we look at it that way, we'll, we'll be good. And, and what's nice about this conversation is it le- leads beautifully into – I was just about to say that. <laughs> into our, our far superior guests that we have on the, uh, the right. podcast today. Award-winning guests. Mm-hmm. And, you know, during – I think it was, for me personally, one of the darkest of times throughout this whole pandemic and everything. There was some great news that I got one day, and it has to do with our two guests, like Mike said, award-winning guests. Multi-award winning guests. Multi, yes. <laughs> I'd love to. I wish I, I could that. just have like a round of applause in the background of this podcast, <laughs> but I'm happy to introduce Pete Sanchez and Lori Powers, and um, they won... They came in first place this year for the best podcast program, and the award was given by the Catholic Press Association of the United States and Canada. And just to give people some perspective, um, the Catholic Press Association was founded in 1911. It has over 600 member organizations and reaches to over 26 million people. So this is a huge deal. It really is. And their faces are so red right now that (laughs) one of my favorite parts is just bragging about people, especially people who are so humble. But here we are. They're on the podcast. We got them. So Lori and Pete, welcome to actually what is really your second home, truthfully. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Mary and Mike. For the listeners who might um, not know, um, Lori and Pete have their own podcast called Talking Saints. Um, well, which Talking is Saints amazing. is in the ca- Talking Catholic feed, it right? Is, it is. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so hopefully people know that, well, that well, it's happening. Just in case. <laughs> well, for our, for our d- domestic church media listeners who only okay. get the Talking Catholic programming, uh, they may not hear that the, the Talking Saints, and, and which, is a, which is a shame because, uh, and I may have to figure out some way of getting around that at some point. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll start tacking on Talking Saints episodes to like shorter versions of Talking Catholic or something. Although it's difficult because the Talking Saints episodes, okay, so just to lay a little groundwork, um, Talking Catholic, uh, this is now our 184th episode, I think. It's hard to believe. And about almost almost two years ago, I guess, we decided that we needed a second podcast and we needed it to be better than the parent podcast. So, Which apparently it is, so, <laughs> as they came in first. <laughs> so I guess, you know, so I asked the two of you, I actually don't remember the genesis of Talking Saints. How did it, how did we come up with Talking Saints? I, I think know, it was or, Peter Sanchez, actually. It wasn't my idea, so uh, well, it must have been Whose crazy idea was it well, last year? <laughs> well, I, I kind of, um, I don't know. I think it was both of us, Lori, because I've known, I've had the privilege of knowing Lori for quite a while. Um at St. Rose of Lima, the mm-hmm. young adult ministry. And so we, we'd always, remember after our adoration on Friday nights, we'd go out to a diner and we'd just talk about Catholicism and saints. And I, and in my own life, I'm always looking for inspiration. Yeah. So I thought, you know, um, why not just try to, you know, it, it was not only a chance for others to get to know the saints, but for me to get to know the saints. Mm-hmm. So. I will admit that in some ways this podcast is selfish reasons, um, <laughs> because I want to be a better person in the Saints. I believe, I hope they make me better. And I just, uh, Lori, I think Mike and I talked, and we thought you'd be you'd be good to come, you know, 
So, Lori, did they force you again, <laughs> or uh, did you voluntarily join? I voluntarily joined. But if I'm going to be honest, I think initially I thought, oh, it probably won't happen. Okay, it's a nice <laughs> idea, but I don't know. Okay, if it happens, that'll be good. But, you know, who knows? But God wanted it to happen, apparently. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, so what, Lori, what is the Talking Saints podcast about? I think from... <laughs> I'm we tried that... to make it as self-explanatory by the title as possible, Mike. Uh, so. at, at, at its essence, like what is it? Like what? Like what? So we choose a saint um, based on the feast day. That so we what month it is? We look at the calendar and say, okay, let's pick a particular feast day for this month, and then share a little bit about their lives. Try to find some stories that maybe people aren't familiar with, and um, then really just ask for their intercession and talk about how they've inspired us. So. And uh, and it's a shorter podcast, right? It is usually fifteen minutes around yeah. that, with one notable exception. But we, we <laughs> won't bring that up. Saint <laughs> Nicholas, he didn't mind. It's okay, Mike. <laughs> oh, <laughs> still, we can now read the minds of the saints, family. <laughs> I still remember. Yeah. He loves this, Mike. It's okay. yeah. Saint Nicholas gag gift I got from my parents for Christmas Day. They gave me a book on Saint Nicholas. Like, oh, okay, so next year you can totally redo it. So <laughs> yes. thanks, mom. Thanks, dad. Yeah. Yes, that, notoriously the the Saint uh, the, the Saint Nicholas episode. Uh, which was released on the Feast of St. Nicholas, uh, was notoriously short. I mean, eight minutes maybe? It was <laughs> oh, really I thought, short. I haven't heard this. I thought that it went over. No, like, no, no. no they, it was short. Oh, Saint I know what got, I'm listening to after this. St. <laughs> Nicholas got short shrift for, for that episode. Poor St. Nick. And unfortunately, oh, I don't think myself or, nor Father Robert Sinatra has ever let these two live it down oh. that uh, they, they gave Father. It was Father. December. We probably had Christmas shopping to do or something. <laughs> like, I don't recall. <laughs> Well, you know, what I what I like about uh, Talking Saints, now I, I admit that I have the benefit of producing both of these, so I sit in the back and edit these, although you guys have been good about, um, I, I now can leave the room, you guys will record, I'll just come back in, and then I listen back to it later. Um, it's, it's a completely different f- feel than this podcast. As a matter of fact, I've now taken it upon myself to listen to other Catholic podcasts, and I've come to the realization that uh, the Talking Catholic podcast that we're on right now bears no resemblance to any other Catholic (laughs) podcast in the nation in the sense that all the podcasts I listen to now are, they all have that same breathy NPR style and they're now becoming overproduced. I can tell the hosts are reading their their questions for their mm-hmm. interviewees off a list. Like, Mike, I've, are you really bashing the other Catholic <laughs> podcasts in our country? Well, I'm not. <laughs> that is an excellent. In my N- best NPR voice possible. <laughs> I was going to say, that was an outstanding no NPR one's voice. falling asleep right now. <laughs> but you have continually accused me of using an NPR voice. If but only, apparently you... that's what everyone else is doing. So maybe we're missing something here. <laughs> well, I, maybe it's because I, as a general rule, like I do listen to Catholic podcast but most of the podcasts I listen to are secular podcasts they're mostly mm-hmm. news podcasts because uh, I'm, I'm very specific about what I listen to or where I get my news right and I really do try, <coughs> excuse me really do try to find um, non-partisan podcasts which mm-hmm. are very hard to find yeah so um, anyway the ones that I like the most are the ones that don't follow that NPR style they're actually very irreverent to not irreverent, irreverent. To the to- not to the topic <laughs> they're irreverent to the style okay which is one of the things that I've liked about about podcasts so I say all that to say this with the exception for the fact that it since I'm the one producing it is definitely not overproduced uh, talking Saints actually does I think gravitates into that more traditional type of, of Catholic podcast which judging from the fact that you are both multi award winning podcasters yes. last year winning second place for best diocesan Their faces podcast, are red again I love it and this year winning first place in the country for Best Diocesan Podcast. And can I add the judges' comments, too? Yes, I have them right in front of me. Oh, I haven't this seen podca- those. <laughs> <laughs> this, oh, I should read it in my NPR voice, but I'm just too excited. So, <laughs> this podcast offers delightful and educational dialogue about saints, including their inner lives and their impacts on the world. Well-crafted and engaging, listeners are sure to be enriched by this content. And I could not agree more. And, and that's really the truth of the matter. Because yeah. I, I have to tell you, you know, uh, the two of you do a great job with your research. I, I mean, when you listen to it, you get into things that I've never really seen reported about before or that aren't common known to these saints. So, Lori, like what goes into your research? 
Well, it depends on the saint. So if it's someone I know fairly well, I might already have stories that I just have to confirm that I have some source for, yeah. <laughs> um, or things that people have told me, or if it's a saint that I have a particular devotion to, I know I'll have more to fall back on. I can talk about that. Um, otherwise, we would go to, you know, Google is the source of all information, <laughs> right? <laughs> and really just see what's out there. So I try to go to, um, if there are particular religious communities that are named for the saint, because they would have usually a richer history yeah. um, and have the stories that maybe, you know, the, the sites that cover all the saints wouldn't have. So just right. looking for the stories that I would want to hear and the things that are maybe unusual or the things that would be more inspiring for people. And Lori, have you always been kind of well-read when it comes to saints or did this come over time? Well, it was probably because of Catholic school. You know, yeah. we were always hearing about the saints or reading the little saint books or I, I remember first grade we all dressed as saints so oh. it's been there since yeah since yeah. I was little so yeah how about you Pete do the have you always been fascinated by saints or I wouldn't come say on? I wouldn't say always I was thinking about I, I do remember Lori I think it was first or second grade I dressed up as Saint Peter and of huh. course, and I still remember I had the cardboard keys to the kingdom that uh, it was a cutout. And I, I believe I had a beard and a staff. Um, I want pictures of both of you, by the way. <laughs> oh, no. First grade, I have Lori one. and Definitely. Pete. I'll find it for you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to do some digging. But with the, uh, again, to your question, Mary, I think it's. Uh, only for the past couple of years, I remember growing up, my heroes were more um, baseball players like King Griffey Jr., Alan Rip, Cal Ripken, um, individuals like that. But now, I, I just over the past couple of years, it's been the Saints. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would say as I've gotten older, I've gotten a better appreciation of them. Not to say I didn't know about them in grade school. I learned about the Apostles, learned yeah. about St. Paul. But... Uh, there's been a fervor in the last couple of years. And, and I, you know, actually, sorry. come to think about it, I think we may have given you each of you a little short shrift. Uh, you, you are more than just talking uh, talking yeah. Saints podcast oh, hosts. Uh, Lori, what do you do as your day job? Oh, my day job is Director of Evangelization and Discipleship at Christ the Redeemer in ACCO. Mm -hmm. And Pete? I'm a writer for the Catholic Star Herald newspaper and social media coordinator. So quite Catholic educated, uh, and both of <laughs> yes, you. Uh, we are pretty deep in yeah. <laughs> church work. Yeah. But you know, the, you know, when I listen to the the talking saints, um, I often, I, Lori and Pete, both of you have really done a good job, I find, in in um, showcasing the humanity of the saints. Mm -hmm. And I think that really goes a long way to, as to why so many people really respond to it. Um, are there any examples of sort of the human side of, of these saints that has appealed to you in your research in the past? Sure. I was just thinking about that on the way here. Um, I'm wondering why, you know, why, why did this podcast win? And I think it's really the content. It's not, it's not us. It's who we're talking about. Um, and See, humble as always. <laughs> it's true. And, you know, just thinking about no matter what struggle you're going through or what sin you might be struggling with, there's some saint that experienced it and overcame it. So we have an example for almost any situation at any point, you can find a saint who's even maybe the patron saint of that particular situation that you can go to and ask for their intercession and their prayer. So I think that's why it appeals to people and why it's fun to talk about them. And when people pray to saints, do you think there's more of a, like Mike said, a human element? Like in some cases, these people walked the earth I did in my lifetime. You know, how is it different when you kind of pray or invoke saints? So I think some saints choose us. Mm -hmm. So I went to um, St. Teresa Regional School in Runnymede, um, but I didn't really know too much about St. Therese. We saw her statue, we would celebrate her feast day, um, and then I read a little bit of her writings, and I was like, I don't really like her. Like, <laughs> like why is she, she just complains a lot, and, and, and she's not living a really hard life, you know, but it's just, yeah. it seemed, but then, uh, you know, just a few years ago, I picked up um, Story of a Soul again, I said, oh, this is beautiful, it was just not the right time, right. and she was chasing me until she said, listen, you need my help, you need my understanding session mm. like I'm on your crew so then when I read it at that point it was maybe 10 years ago I went, wow okay she has some beautiful insights to just 
living the little way, you know, living with love in the daily life. And and it wasn't so much that she was complaining. It was that she really was suffering. And for yeah. her, the spiritual suffering was real. <laughs> yeah. And it was a challenge. So for us, it might have looked like, okay, her life wasn't that hard. But in turn, in, interiorly, she was really struggling. You know, that's, so. that's an interesting concept. Do you think um, as we age... This is going to sound like a strange question, but do you think as we age, maybe our devotions to saints change as well because of the time we are in our life? Oh, absolutely. Really? Then I was also thinking about there are some saints that God seemed to have chose right from birth, that they were always going to be close to him and always follow him, and there wasn't going to be any egregious sin in their life, and that was just a special grace. Um but I think for others, as you can see, their lives changed. I'm sure they were in- influenced by different saints at different points in their life when they needed it, you know? Yeah. So, yes, absolutely. Oh, that's fascinating. What about you, Pete? I, I agree. I think uh, for me, one of the, um, the – I love this journey of discovery I go through each month trying to research the saint. Uh, the saint Lori and I did a few weeks – a few months ago, St. Philip Neri. Mm. Uh it was very interesting. He was a big uh, he was a big part of the Counter Reformation and uh, an evangelizer to Rome, and just the way that he did that and went through that, and he talked to the fish, and he <laughs> they said he even converted the fish. Like they were all what? gathering around him. Yeah, it's just so like those kind of stories are very. Um, I, I, it it touched me especially now. It kind of. Uh, gave me another little kick to keep evangelizing. Mm-hmm. But talking about the humanity, Mike and Mary, where well, you were mentioning that these saints provide, uh, I'm always I'm always uh, interested in how these live saints, how God, how how they how how they had an encounter with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like Saint Paul, for instance, was Saul and was in Damascus, thrown off the horse. Somebody like uh, like. St. Saint Peter met on the shore of Galilee. Uh, and the other thing I'll say is with these saints, they had an understanding of God's grace. And I think, unfortunately, in today's culture, people sometimes feel shame. They feel embarrassment over how they are. They feel depressed. And if you look at the scriptures, if you know what is, uh, you know, the, uh, these saints have been comforted. They've been touched by Jesus. And one of the things I love about St. Peter is he denied Jesus three times. And I think it's a distinction between him and Judas, because Judas denied Jesus as well, sold him off. But with St. Peter, St. Peter realized he could be forgiven. Mm-hmm. Peter realized that there was grace. And he wept and he was sorry for a sense Mm -hmm. and judas unfortunately sadly could not reach that point Mm -hmm. and and especially if you look at the gospels or even um after after the the scripture after the resurrection of jesus peter became so on fire for the lord after realizing there was grace there was the love of jesus that he had Mm -hmm. so at least for me in those dark moments in my own life where it's cloudy i just remember people like saint peter no jesus is always with me he's in that boat and last year at the convocation uh donna taviano bread our friend who we all know mentioned that and i that image of jesus sleeping in the boat um while the storm is raging around us is just a beautiful image and i think all the saints knew that jesus was in the boat resting Mm. so i think that appeals to what uh and and they were human like yeah they were human they 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 weren't perfect they and and that that makes them kind of relatable to people in some ways exactly like peter right Mm -hmm. you know there's that quote um every I don't want to get this mixed up. <laughs> every saint has a past. Every sinner has a future. And, you know, you mentioned um, yes. St. Peter denying Jesus three times. Are there any other pasts that you guys have been surprised by or like little factoids where it's, wow, really? That person did that? Or <laughs> are there any well, interesting I, tidbits? And I'm putting you on the spot. I'm sorry. I know Peter <laughs> loves St. Augustine. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> it, it back Pete, to no. me. <laughs> 
<laughs> we say. talked about him <laughs> multiple I, times. Oh, you know, Saint Augustine. <laughs> I, I think if Saint Augustine can be a saint, anybody can be a saint. Um, oh, he lived he's, a, he's wa- a painter saint of sinners. He found yes. every good way he, of yes. saint. Yeah. Saint he Augustine. really and he fathered a child. And really? Yeah. He uh, and he he admits he was wild. One of the uh, you should read the confessions by Saint Augustine. Uh, I recommend it's it's a tough read, but stick with it. Um, and the other thing, not only with with uh, Saint Augustine, the other thing I love about him, not only his his past, where he he uh, he proved that it was possible for he was possible to uh, become a saint. Mm. Um, he had family behind him. His mother mm. prayed for him constantly, Saint Monica, and. That is a wonderful image, too, and also in some ways a model for us to pray to those individuals who might not understand or or understand the Lord or not have that relationship with Jesus. Um, So it goes both ways, St. Augustine and St. Monica. I love both of them. Yeah. How about you, Lori? <laughs> I'm thinking of two saints, but not so much that they have a past, but mm-hmm. they're doing things that are kind of crazy for the Lord, or they've yeah. had they had to suffer something that would surprise us. So um, I don't remember either of their names, which is awful, but you can probably <laughs> look them up. I've heard other people tell these stories. Right. So there was one, I think he might be a blessed, um, and he was an Uh, addicted to opium so this was years ago I think he was in Asia and he would go to confession frequently and just say he cannot kick this habit and the priest told him well you cannot receive communion so you really can't receive the the grace of the sacraments but he was still faithful he never um, was freed of that addiction his entire life he died still addicted to opium opium but he is a blessed now because yeah. of his fidelity, even though, I mean, he was, he respected what the priest said, like, okay, I will not receive communion, but I still want to persevere, still want to try, still want to be faithful to the Lord. So that impressed me, the fact that he died an addict, and yet is, we believe, on his way to heaven or is there. So that was one that I remember. Oh, that is Is it St. Mark G. Tianjiang? That sounds familiar. Thank you He's for looking Chinese. that up. Chinese. Yes. <laughs> I didn't look it up. I remembered it. And I totally didn't butcher the pronunciation either. That was good. Once again, the power of St. Google. That's right. Yeah, right. Thank God for Google. <laughs> Sorry. What was the other one? The Lord? other one, if you want to keep your phone out. Oh, I will. <laughs> it's all my so memory. This is, was either a, a priest or a bishop. I forget which. He felt really called to minister to prostitutes. So we, he would actually pay prostitutes just to spend time with him so they would not be working otherwise. And someone saw him coming out of a brothel and killed him because oh, they were so, oh. yes. They were so, so he, scandalized? Yes, so scandalized by this behavior. But, I mean, the Lord called him. That was That's pretty crazy. Like, I don't think everyone's called to <laughs> necessarily walk into brothels. But And then he died for it. So that was... Well, I mean, we keep hearing we're supposed to go where the people are. That's so, true. I mean, if, if that true. was his... But if God calls you there, you have to be proof. Oh, yeah, right. You know? right. <laughs> I don't think everyone should be walking into well, brothels. Well, you, you know, sit. I'm yeah. not sure about that. Maybe maybe if we had a... I, well, I don't I, think your wife would on, be okay with no, that. No, no, no. But what, I think it depends on what they're doing when they're in the exactly. brothel, but yeah, I hear exactly. what you're saying. Was it St. Vitalis of, of Gaza? That sounds right. Yes. Yes. I think it was Jason Everett that talks about him frequently. Okay. Yes. Wow, your your Googling skills awesome. are outstanding, Mary. That's great turnaround time. You're putting my phone away now. Your words per minute must be outstanding. You know, <laughs> and then with the thumbs. Thank you, Mary. That, those are really interesting, though. It's stuff like that that I think listeners would find so surprising. I mean, I didn't know either yes. of those things, and it's just yeah. well, it's I, there used to be a website that I when I was when I was this was many jobs ago, maybe my second job when the internet was still fairly new, um, <laughs> the, and I guess it was probably I want to say it was Catholic.org or Saints.com or something like that, but long, long ago, like way before, when you would sit at your desk, when I still had time to sit at my desk and not do work and, and Google things instead. <laughs> Who has time back for that? Day. Day. <laughs> Anymore, that doesn't exist. But back in the day, I did. I used to, I used to love going through all the Saints mm-hmm. um, uh, pages and just seeing these really, like, who's a patron saint of who? And Because I've, I've, for years, I have attempted to find like a patron saint that really speaks to me. When I was in grade school, um, 
I took my, as my um, confirmation name, I took Luke because mm-hmm. I was a big fan of St. Luke. You know, he preached to, you know, he was the first of the of the writers to to, pe- to be preaching to a non-religious group. So he was, pre- he was preaching to the Gentiles, right? Mm-hmm. And I really that I re- that really meant a lot to me, and uh, and I was like, okay, well that's interesting. He's, he's he's going outside and he's evangelizing, but then you know over time that St. Luke kind of fell off. And then when I became a writer, I was like, well, if I'm a writer, I got to be you know, you know St. Francis de Sales, obviously. <laughs> right. You know, that's, yeah. that's yeah. definitely. And I do have an affinity to St. Francis de Sales, but I can't say that I've ever really developed a strong connection. Have to you him. read his writings? I've read a couple. Introduction to the Devout Life, Michael. That should be on your list. I will. Okay, hold on. I'm literally grabbing a pen right now. I was going to grab a pen. you might like his letters to people living in the world better. That might be a place to start. Okay. He's just offering advice to lay people, whoever's writing to him. I do like telling people to do, telling people what to do. So that might, I might have put people to that. (laughs) Remember, he's my boss. Don't tell him this, Lori. (laughs) If you can offer spiritual advice to the people who work for you, Mike, that would be lovely. Nice. Is, as I, I admit, you know, I'm, I'm the PR guy here, which makes me the the lowest rung of the oh. of the spiritual ladder in a diocese. Uh, it's usually me and the lawyers, like you know, uh, Z and Z two. Uh, yeah, we're at the out of our league here Aww. when it comes to spirituality. But you know, I've talked about this on the podcast in the past. Is that you know, I, I there's a part of me that it, that is sad that I work in diocesan life now because I used to be able to do a lot more evangelizing mm. to like. There's, there's a siloing effect when you do communications in mm-hmm. a church. Most of the time, you're speaking to the church members. You're quite literally preaching to the choir. Now, that's a group that needs to be preached to. There's nothing wrong in that. That's wonderful. There was something I really enjoyed being in secular life and preaching to the agnostics and the atheists and the people from other faiths and, and not preaching in the sense of necessarily trying to convert anybody you know, mm-hmm. in, in an overt way. But answering questions mm-hmm. and encouraging them to check things out, and and it, it's it, that was something I, I really loved. And working here, I do kind of miss a little bit. Don't get me wrong; yeah. I I've probably through osmosis brought taken in more mm-hmm. spirituality over the last five years than than any opportunity I, I had in the past. So, like all PR people, our times are usually short lived in uh, diocesan Aww. life. So I'm sure when I leave here, I'll be leaving uh, to and bringing that spirituality back out into the world in some you know secular place that hates the Catholic Church. But you know, oh, I will. Uh, I will. Just took a depressing they turn. Hate, they don't hate the church once they meet you, Mike. That's right. Like, that's my point. Guy. I mean, I will showcase it. Yes, Catholics are wonderful people, and we should all you should get to know a couple because we right. we care about you. Um, so, Mike, you said that you never quite found a saint that you can really identify with. Is that what you said? Well, honestly, the only saint that I've ever actually ident- identified with, like any good sinner, is St. Augustine. Like, I have, uh, I have attempted to... We are in the same boat. Yeah, I, I have attempted to, the, particularly those of us who have led a very secular life for most of our lives, yeah. you know, um, he, it's a great book. It's a, Pete's right. I haven't made it through Confessions yet. I try every summer to read it, and it is a very difficult read. Yeah. But if you can focus and you're good with, what is that, Old English? I don't know. It's, it's written in a... Yeah. It's, in a vernacular yeah. that it's not oh, modern no, anyway, shape or form. That's off the table for me then. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough read. You could read. probably find a modern translation yeah. of it though. Yeah. I'm sure somebody has. Uh, Lori, can you read it to I'm, me and just dumb it down? <laughs> <laughs> just read go back time. and read the. I'm sure you guys have done a St. Augustine podcast, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah we do the podcast. Well, I'm going to listen to that one. There you go. Well, there I can you know. sum it up for you. It's basically I chose sin just out of the pure love of sin. And then God intervened and said, now it's time, you know. I, it, this enough is enough. <laughs> There's Same something memory. about that raw honesty. Yeah. It's like the book Power and the Glory, the Whiskey yes. Priest. Like, there's a reason that that book is so powerful. You know, people who are flawed. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I can identify with them. <laughs> Mary, I will say, use use uh, Google to uh, if you Google Saint Augustine, the everlasting love. That is a section of Saint Augustine, and it's a quick. Uh, it's like a little treatise. It starts with, late have I loved you, ever ancient and ever new. Oh, beauty, ever ancient and ever new. And it's probably, for me, the encapsulation of that whole thing. 
I will I, check it out. I'm just getting chills hearing that. Yeah. Listen, hearing it in my head, um, I don't want to say it all, but wow. I don't know, Lori, would you agree? Do you think that... Uh, yes, that know, would be a good powerful? place to... Yeah. Is there okay. a uh, particular... Is there a particular saint that each of you is your favorite, or do you call upon different saints depending on where you are? But if you I had to pick whole team. one, you no, know, you have to have a crew. Saint squad, yeah. one. Saint I need squad, a team yeah. to get through the day. Who's your team, Lori? <laughs> team, let's see. So definitely Saint Therese. I finally said okay, <laughs> <laughs> and she is. Uh, I mean, she has something to say about everything. So Pete mentioned. Um, Jesus being asleep in the boat, and Therese talked about the fact that most people see Jesus asleep in their boat, and they're all upset about the waves and the wind, and they want to wake him up. She would just let him sleep. She's like, he knew, okay, I'm going to get through this. We'll get through the storm. Just let him, he needs the rest. Let him sleep in my boat. <laughs> oh, I like so that. I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> um, St. Marie Goretti, that was actually mm. my home parish growing up, and just the fact that she was a, a young saint, and she was a child. Um, when I was younger, I could relate to that. I'm like, oh, wow. She, I mean, she died young, but oh. she was holy by the time she was 12 and, straight, and was able to forgive the person that murdered her. So that's wow. powerful. Yeah. Um, let's see. St. Dominic and St. Cecilia, because I spent a little bit of time with the Dominican sisters of St. Cecilia. So I got to know the two of them. That's my confirmation well. name. Yes, she's incredible. <laughs> she is. Um, I know many people choose her because she's the patroness of music. That's why I picked it, but, but I didn't even know anything her about her at the time. Her is story incredible. is incredible. She's yeah. a martyr that wouldn't die. They had to try several different right. times to, wow. yep. to execute her. So look that story up. Pretty yes. incredible. Um, who else? St. Elizabeth. That's my middle name. So that's who I Aww. dressed as in first grade. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess those would be the, and then depending on the circumstances. Yeah. So I love the devotion to divine mercy. So St. Faustina. That's, that's your crew. one I go to, yeah. <laughs> I like that. So who's in your crew besides St. Peter, Pete? Well, well, I keep a few in my pocket, actually. Uh, oh, that's if I can right. give a plug. Oh, he means that stuff. quite literally. I'm looking at oh. his... Uh, there is a awesome, if you go to tinysaints.org, you can find these little figurines. Oh, they're so um, cute. Little keychains. They're they great. are, and I just keep them with me. I have here, Blessed Pierre Giorgio Fersati, who Laura and I have talked about on yes. the show, July 4th. And uh, he he died early, but he was just a man. And I, I, I don't know if we've really talked a lot about the joy of the saints. Um, and he was very joyful when I think about him. Uh, many of the pictures of him are he's smiling. He liked to hike. He, he was a 20th century saint. He was very modern, um, but was a social justice uh, fighter and loved the Lord and always willing to help others. So I have him. Uh, one of his one of the quotes attributed to him in Italian is verso l'alto, which means to the heights, mm-hmm. which meant, you know, reaching going higher on the mountain, but also going higher to the Lord. Hmm. So there's him here. He's got a little walking stick and a pipe. I wish our listeners could see this. It's (laughs) it's really cool. And then uh, I got St. Paul. Mm. Uh, He has got a sword and the word as a missionary. Mm. And, of course, I have St. Augustine, who um, has this holding his burning heart. Aww. Because that yeah. is, um, if you look at him in artwork, he's usually depicted with his own holding his burning heart. So, yeah, those three and St. Peter, of course, and I think St. Philip Neri now, and um, even St. Francis de Sales. And uh, I think there's one more that I can't I can't quite get when I'm thinking. Oh, um. John Paul II, oh, St. John Paul II, mm-hmm. who was kind of a Renaissance man and uh, was big into the arts, was an actor um, as a youth and um, wrote a, wrote a, uh, wrote a big, uh, wrote a, when he was Pope, he wrote, um, a, I think, a, I don't want to say a summary, a treatise, like a sermon on, on uh, the beauty of art mm-hmm. in terms of all form. So, He's he's a big one for me, St. John Paul II. Wow. Oh, and I forgot. I'm sure you would agree. We just take for granted that the Blessed Mother is in our crew. <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> she's she's never yeah. Queen of he's all saints. The, so. he's a, <laughs> the, uh, you know, that's so interesting to, to hear you talk about. And, you know, going through your litany of the saints, I should also point out, I, I don't think we've mentioned this at, at the very beginning, but Talking Saints is a monthly podcast, and it doesn't appear on any particular day, which is why it's always been difficult for me to shoehorn it into our <laughs> domestic church media version. 
question because uh, we've never had one that sort of line up at the same time, which is a shame because it would be great to, to hit, make sure all of our listeners can can hear it. Um, but, yeah, so – like I think you guys have an almost two month break between your last one and the one that's coming up at the end of this out. month. It was the seeds so, we picked. Sorry, so, Mike. It's summer. <laughs> it's summertime. But yeah, exactly. And it's always released on their feast day. Right. So who's the next episode? Which when's it coming out? Saint Ignatius of Loyola. Oh, Spoil oh, that. Okay. No. Sorry. Go ahead. No, Guess I, I have something to look forward to. Yeah. Okay. July thirty first. This okay. is feast, okay. right? Thirty first. Yes. Totally? Yes. Yeah, yeah. But Founder. you guys haven't recorded it yet. Not yet. <laughs> Yes. So, oh and you're not recording it today, right? No. Okay. No. <laughs> why, why do it too, too far in advance? We planned it at separate times. S- Sorry, Mike. Silly us. The, uh, the, uh, well, that's going to be interesting because, as we know, there are a number of people in our diocese, including our aforementioned Donna Otavio and Britt, who are our big Ignatian types. Actually, I was listening to a podcast. This is, well, this is, it's, it, uh, forget it. I'm not going to talk about it. Sorry. I, I was about to conflate uh, uh, St. Ignatius and the Jesuits. And do a similar story, and it's kind of two different worlds. Um, <laughs> the uh, but just going through your your litany of saints that that you rely on uh, takes me back to my original question of of you know why we're drawn to people, and it got me to thinking, you know, through so the history of the last two thousand years, and as saints have been named, have there been like different time periods where we've seen different popes? elevating saints for different reasons at different times it, 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 for that matter for different uh, at different um, n- at different numbers mm. like uh, has the, was there any pope that was really known for making saints uh, made think, a lot of saints St. John Paul II was I a saint that. maker yeah. I think saint he maker, yeah. uh, canonized more people than the last four popes before him combined yeah. and he also was looking for not just religious so lay people married people um, young people so that Everybody had role models, but right. yeah, the fact that he he was canonizing all the time, <laughs> lots of people. Do you get excited when a new saint is named? Yes. Like, is that well? I, and I say, I, I don't mean to say, she's like, duh. <laughs> I know it's Come a one, on, Mike. more content for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Um, but I mean, is there so a, so a saint, a newly minted saint, is named, and maybe it's one that's sort of not well. Like we all knew Mother Teresa was going to be mm. a saint. I mean, that was kind of locked in um, but there are a number of other saints that none of us have ever heard of before until That's they're true. named a saint which got me to thinking um, does it take time for for that saint to sort of gather its gather his or her you know reputation that like for, for people to become drawn to that I mean everybody was drawn to St. John Paul II and that was and Mother Teresa but how about other ones like is it unusual like you were talking about Blessed Giorgio and um, like I'd never heard of him before until you guys brought him up, but it seems like there's this incredible groundswell that exists for him. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, I think normally, Lori, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, with the sainthood process, does it starts with the vice postulator? Well, sometimes? it starts locally. Locally, so yeah. it would depend on the devotion would usually be people who knew them or were from their local area. Okay. So Per Giorgio has become more known because there's now something called the Frisati Societies, yeah. which are groups of young adults, which has really taken off in the United States. Um, so that's why we both got to know him. And I'm sure in Italy, he was always huge because people knew him because the devotion was local. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so it would start locally. You would need to, um, the bishop, I think the local bishop would have to okay opening the cause. And then they assign a postulator and start investigating their life. Um, and then people can start asking for miracles through their intercession because that's we need at least two miracles to yeah. be canonized. So Now, this brings up a, an interesting question. Because I think a lot of people, a lot of, let's call them commoner Catholics, of which I am. Commoner? (laughs) Commoner Catholics. Uh, People who are not at a certain level of their Catholicism to understand certain nuances of Mm. the Catholic faith. And one of those that has often confused people and seriously confuses Protestants, I think, (laughs) is how we pray Mm. via saints. So how, Mm. what is the... What is the process for utilizing a saint to get your message to God? <laughs> so I guess the best way to Ooh, put it. That's it. <laughs> the same process as if you asked someone that you know, a friend or someone else in your church, to pray for you. Yeah. Except yeah. we know that this person is in heaven, so we can trust that they are closer to Jesus and will hopefully yeah. get an, a response perhaps more easily or more quickly than asking just your yeah. friends to pray for you. <laughs> 
Yeah, we don't. I, I think we don't worship the saints. We of worship not. Mm. Jesus. Um, we uh, we pray to the saints for intercessory prayers. Right. It's kind of. Um, I think we could go straight to Jesus, but I think going to a saint uh, gives a little boost. I think there was a great priest who well, actually. This is dealing with Mary, but it's like you're approaching the king and you have a piece of fruit. You want to give him the piece of fruit, but. You know, you tell the saint, you know, or, or the, your friend who's got a higher standing right. with the king. You tell him, here, give it to the, the give my, give this apple to the king. And the king or your friend will then put it on a beautiful plate and then present it to the king. Hmm. And the king will take not only the apple, but also the plate as a thing of a magnificent beauty and be like, wow, I accept this gift. So that's what I think. I think... Uh, if you think like a video game, you get like a power up. If you go pray, <laughs> why would you like think of a good analogy? analogy? Man, those are two disparate <laughs> analogies. I totally get what you're saying. I was, I was thinking like a letter of recommendation <laughs> almost. Okay, or, yeah, you know. that's even for yeah. So that's, that's, you can do I the like apple, the way you put that, or you can do the power up. <laughs> Either like one works, right? Yes. <laughs> and I guess we need to back up a little bit and just talk about the communion of saints because in Scripture, Paul describes even us as saints, those who are disciples of Christ. So the communion of saints is the church triumphant, those who have made it to heaven, and we now can ask for their intercession. Um, The church militant, which is all of us, we're still, you know, battling our way there. And then the church suffering, which would be the holy souls in purgatory. And they can pray for us too. Their Hmm. prayers are very powerful. I don't think we mention that much when we're talking saints, we go straight to the saints. Um, But just the fact that we're all united. And so we can ask as part of the body of Christ, we can ask the saints to intercede for us because we are connected to them. Um, They're just a little bit closer to Jesus than we are at the moment. (laughs) So what would be a non... Okay, so there are many prayers to saints that I think, you know, we there are there are a number of saintly prayers that I think we've probably all said at some point in our lives. But let's say on a whim, other than who is who is the finder of lost things? St. Anthony. St. Anthony, right. Okay. Really, How Mike? Even I knew that. Okay. You common Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> did I did I not lay out my lack of bona fides earlier? You did. Um, the so yeah, my wife uh, prays to him all the time. So he always comes through. But like, I always you should pray to him work. more it's for wild. anything. I make a point through. not losing things. <laughs> to be truthful with you, um, the uh, but I always get Saint Anthony and Saint Jude confused. Mm. Not as saints, but as which one to pray to pray when you lose something. Mm. The um, so what would be like if you're actually just living your daily life and you have this moment where you just you you need to ask a saint for an intercession. How do you just quickly pray to a saint? I know it sounds like a ridiculous question. <laughs> I don't I would know just the answer. I'm curious Say too. their name and pray for us. So I go to St. Joseph a lot, too, because he's the universal patron of mm-hmm. everything. So if I need something, I'm like, okay, St. Joseph. And I just consecrated myself to him. So that's a whole – that's like, okay, bonus point. It's just like <laughs> I'm powered up with another saint. Um, but really just asking – I would even say, like, when I lose things, I'm like, St. Anthony – please help me. I'm sorry I only go to you when I lose things, but I really need this thing. And he always comes through. <laughs> okay, now, so you just made a mistake. Uh, uh, you said the words, I consecrated myself to thinking I wasn't going to maybe say that the, for the last seven minutes of this conversation, we're now going to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. So, Lori. <laughs> she buried yes. a lead here. Yeah, I know. Oh <laughs> you, uh, so you've consecrated yourself to St. Joseph. Would you yes. like to explain what that means? Sure. And what you did? So Yes. Okay, so let me back up. So more commonly, Catholics, even commoner Catholics, <laughs> often con- consecrate themselves to Our Lady. That is a more common path. I actually, right now in our parish, um, I have over 100 people preparing themselves to consecrate themselves to Our Lady on um, the Feast of the Assumption, August 15th. So there's actually a 33-day preparation for that. So typically when you consecrate yourself to a saint, um, there's a preparation for it. So. Father Donald Calloway, who's a Marian of the Immaculate Conception, just wrote a book called Consecration to St. Joseph. And you really just, I think that one was 30 days. And just each day you would read something about him um, and ask for a particular virtue of his. And then on, usually it's on his feast day or one of his feast days. So March 19th, I did it this year. Um, You would basically entrust yourself to him as, for St. Joseph, it would be as a spiritual father. So, you know, take me as your own and help me get to heaven, help me become holy, help me live life well. 
like Jesus did. Mm-hmm. So I highly recommend it. I, Start with Our Lady, though. You know, when you, <laughs> okay, okay. good point. The, uh, you know, it's funny when you you hear something like that. You know, it's it has a very formal sound. It does sound formal, it but it's very, not. Uh, okay, it might be a little intimidating. Not everyone should necessarily consecrate themselves to saints because you are giving yourself to that person and there's a certain commitment you're making. You know, like, I'm going to do my best, St. Joseph. You you do your part, you know? <laughs> but, I, but I think that is important because I think, you know, we, we, we start the show talking about how we're in weird times right now, mm-hmm. right? And We need and, all the help we can get. Yes. Right. Yeah. We need all the help we can get. It and might be a good need, time to yeah. think about it. And we need to refocus ourselves. And it certainly sounds like, between the two of you, you have great focus when it comes to sainthood, particularly when it comes to to having those saints be a part of your life and helping you to stay on the path, which the truth of the matter is, that's really what the saints are designed, the mm. saintliness is designed to do, is to give us waypoints An on example. our path and, yes. and help and things like that and people to pray to. Very human people to pray to examples. Uh, we've heard Pope after Pope say that very thing, um, which is why it's so good to we have a, an entire podcast just dedicated to the yes. saints yes. and a very easy to consume podcast to the short saints. and sweet. Yes. yes, and if I can understand it, our listeners definitely can. <laughs> us common Catholics. I have a question for each of you, and I'm putting you on the spot for this. I don't even know if this question is allowed but Uh if you had to make a prediction or let's say you just had the power i don't have the charism of of prophecy so i don't know (laughs) if i can answer this question (laughs) if somehow is there anybody alive right now or dead actually who you have predictions um who you think will be beatified? I'm sorry. What's the difference between beatified oh, and canonized? That's a good question too. Because so I get that mixed up. <laughs> beatified is the first step, so they're declared blessed, okay. and then ultimately canonized. Okay. So that would be along the path to canonization. Any predictions? Yes, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. I oh. think oh, once okay. he dies, he's going straight to heaven, and his cause will be open. What he has contributed to theology and our understanding of Scripture, and and I just so many people personally love him. I think yeah. yes. I can absolutely see that. He's had his his print his handprint on the Catholic Church over the last mm-hmm. sixty years is very very noticeable. So I can yeah. see that. How about you, Pete? I would go in the arch direction. Uh, I was very ha- pleased to see um, Bishop Robert Barron started a series pivotal players, and one of them was G.K. Chesterton, and I was very happy to see that because I'd love to see him be a saint. Um, and I'll, I think I think also maybe it's important to know that he might already be a saint. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're in heaven, you're a saint. Mm. So, uh, but on earth, it would be wonderful to see him recognized uh, for contributions to uh, just Catholic thought through his books. And he was very witty. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you read Orthodoxy or even uh, he wrote fiction, the Father Brown Mysteries. So he's mm-hmm. somebody who I would want, uh, and even even J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, who wrote mm. Lord of the Rings. Um, I love how it does seem in the past decade or so that this cultural consciousness of individuals like Tolkien and Chesterton has um, has elevated. So I would, I don't know, it would be great to see Chesterton uh, just as just Is as his a cause lover. open, Pete? Has anybody, are they starting? I think they were thinking to? about it, okay. but I am not sure where that stands right mm-hmm. now. I do know um, in England, he was English. Uh, they were, I think there was somebody um, involved. I do not do not know where that is now, mm-hmm. though. We'll have to look into that. We can talk about yeah. it on Talking oh, Saints. Yes. <laughs> and if I, can, if I can mention one thing, I fact-checked myself earlier. Because when we mentioned St. Anthony of Padua, I remembered that fish story it was, was not St. Philip. It was St. Anthony of Padua. So I apologize ah. if I confused anybody. Um, those are the last two podcasts we did, and mm. it kind of all Ran came together. together. Yeah. Well, that, that's a perfect way to end the podcast because we've got about a minute and a half to go. Uh, who's on the list for next episodes? We know who's coming up very next, but who would you like to do that you haven't done yet? We have the year planned, Mike. Oh, we do. Oh, I can give you I can give No you wonder show. they got first place. They have it all planned out. <laughs> well, I have been asking for this for a while, so I'm happy it's finally been written. <laughs> yes, yes, we have the manifesto right here. Okay. Uh, so we got St. Nis of Loyola, July 31st, August 9th, St. Teresa Benedict of the Cross, September 9th, St. Peter Claver, October 1st, St. Teresa Lisieux, 
November 23rd, Blessed Miguel Pro. And December 9th, St. Juan Diego. That is for the uh, the year 29, 2020. Year. And, and maybe uh, you guys will do a special St. Nick's episode that um, we yeah, can to make I up can't wait to listen to this We thought now. about it. We talked yeah. about it. I think Just um, maybe like a two-year to... anniversary of your last <laughs> podcast about them, where you go on for 20 minutes. And then you'll stop talking about it, Mike? Or... And then not. we'll let it go. <laughs> I've met me. Letting things go is not in my... Uh, you know, but pray to a saint. Maybe it'll happen. Okay. The, um, but no, well, thank you both very much. And we really genuinely are very proud of the fact we that are. the two of you are, are multi award-winning podcast hosts and we re- I really do take a great deal of pride in knowing yes. that the two of you are part of the Talking Catholic family and, and doing such great work with, with everything that, that we produce. So Doesn't thank- it feel so good to brag about them it to really our does. listeners? Yeah. And I'm not bitter at all about my own podcast not getting any awards. <laughs> not, totally not bitter about it. Anyway, well thank you and listeners for tuning in and thank you guys for, for joining us and Mary, thank you for hosting this. And, thank you. And uh, we'll t- chat to everyone else next week. See you everybody.